Souvenirs are very much part of our tradition. We want to celebrate, we want to show our support. And you'd buy a mug or a tin and put it on the mantelpiece and say, Dad's my king, Dad's my queen. And souvenirs for weddings has grown and developed over the last 150 years. So if you go back to Queen Victoria's time, she was married to Albert in 1840. And of course, at that time, there were very few souvenirs. And then the next royal wedding was here between Alexandra and Prince of Wales, who has become Edward VII. And there is a very early tin to commemorate this from 1862. Here are just a few items from the 1947 wedding of Princess Elizabeth to the Duke of Edinburgh. But it wasn't until 1981 that we had the next wedding. So by that time, in the intervening years, the amount of production the souvenir industry had really taken off. The wedding of Charles and Diana was a huge event, and the number of souvenirs was absolutely massive. For this wedding of William and Kate to surpass that would be quite an achievement. We've got the T-shirt, we've got the china, we've got the thimble, we've got everything you can really want. When we look at the souvenirs that are being produced, there's always a great diversity, which I think is great fun. You get the top end of the market, the very prestigious and probably expensive commemorative souvenirs of the pottery, the china, but it goes right down to the other end. And to me, I like the, the, the frippery, the ephemeral, the things that are almost throwaway. When you discover these from 50 or 100 years ago, they are more exciting than the things that really have survived. Limited editions of commemorative items will always be around. But the things often produced in their millions tend to get discarded very quickly because they're not seen as something worth saving.